so I'm screwed. According to the Duff Yomi calendar, the next Mishnah comes out tomorrow, and then Sunday, and then Tuesday, and then Wednesday. I guess I could do a video blog for all those days. I mean, it's not like I have two part-time jobs and a social life and sleep. At least I'm not procrastinating anymore. Living with Judaism for the win! Which I guess means that for now we should just take this one mission at a time. The last Mishnah talked about the evening recitation of the Shema, and this one talks about the morning. Me'emetai korin at Shema b'shacharit. From when do we read Shema in the morning? Once again, the Mishnah is interested in answering the question of from when until when are we allowed to say the Shema, except this time in the morning and not in the evening. And again, we've got ourselves a disagreement. Mishi akir bein t'chelet lalavan. When there's enough light to distinguish between the colors blue and white. Or bein t'chelet lekarti when there's enough light to distinguish between blue and green. I hope that eventually we answer the question of from when until when we're allowed to make a video blog when only relying on natural sunlight. Anyway, so white and blue. These are the colors of the tzitzit, the ritual fringes that are worn during the morning prayers. Now one of the purposes of the colors of the tzitzit is to attract the human eye and remind you about the commandments. So it only makes sense that you'd have to be able to distinguish between blue and white in order to say the Shema because those are the colors that are supposed to remind you to say the Shema in the first place. New opinion, new lighting. You can say the Shema when you can differentiate between blue and green. And that makes a lot of sense also. I mean, green's the color of the ground and blue's the color of the sky, and you really should be able to differentiate between those two before you do any praying. It doesn't take as much sunlight to differentiate between white and blue as it does between blue and green. So the white and blue opinion gives us an earlier time in the morning, and the blue and green opinion gives us a later. And my Mishnah doesn't tell me which one is right. So let's move on. So we now know when we can start saying the Shema. Sort of. And of course, naturally, there is now a debate when we can stop saying the Shema. The first opinion says until sunrise, but Rabbi Yoshua says until the first quarter of the day, which is significantly later than sunrise. Rabbi Yoshua's justification for the first quarter of the day is amazing. Shechen, derech b'nei melachim la'amod b'shalashot. The children of kings, like princes, they only wake up during the first quarter of the day not at sunrise. And Rabbi Yoshua's opinion is the opinion that we go by. We're allowed to say Shema until the first quarter of the day. Now why do I love this? Because I mean, think about it. Who are the princes? Who are the children of kings? They're not the majority. They're the cool people. We do what the cool people do. Sorry, but it's so rare that I get to do what the cool people get to do. But high school trauma aside, the Mishnah gives us one more thought. Hakoremi kan ve'elach lo hipsik Whoever reads from then onwards has not lost, like one who reads the Torah. The Mishnah explains that even if you read the Shema past the first quarter of the day, you haven't really lost out. You might have missed the mark on that commandment, but you still managed to fulfill another commandment, reading the Torah. So here's my question. Isn't that last thought completely unnecessary? Can't we figure out for ourselves that we're still fulfilling a commandment? Now I'm not sure, but I think the Mishnah is trying to encourage us. Perhaps the Mishnah wants to comfort us in case we fail to fulfill certain commandments. Like, don't worry, you'll get the next one. Or perhaps the Mishnah is trying to tell us that even when we mess up, something good will come out of it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. I'm interested. And that's the second Mishnah. Shabbat Shalom. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. P.S. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos and being the best Hebruta ever. Please continue to tell people about it and share this on Facebook. Also, if you have any thoughts about the content of this video or the way that this video was made, please let me know. Because you're my Hebruta, my partner. We're in this together.